Hi, welcome to Pastor Talk. I'm Pastor Steve. In this devotion today, in this video, we're going to continue our discussion about the three parables that Jesus gave us in reply to the Pharisees when they asked him, why do you receive and accept? Why are you associating with sinners? And this is found in Luke chapter 15. We have three parables in a row, and I, I don't want to reiterate everything that was included in the uh, you know the last video, but it's connected. The three are so connected. They have so many of the same truths trying to be spoken to us by our Lord. The first one was on the lost sheep. That's the one we did with the last video. And we see some truths that just are true in every one of the three parables. Jesus is telling us how much he loves us. He's telling us that he would leave 99 sheep to go get the one because he cares for that one. And so we see the compassion and we see the love of Jesus Christ. We see the comment made at the end of the last parable about, uh, about repentance, that there's joy in heaven when a person repents. But I want to give you some more information. I don't want to just hit the same points as I did in the last parable. This parable that we're going to speak of today in this devotion is on the lost coin. Let's just read it real quick. Either what woman, having ten pieces of silver, if she lose one piece, doth not light a candle and sweep the house, and seek diligently till she find it? And when she hath found it, she called her friends and her neighbors together saying, Rejoice with me, for I have found the peace which I had lost. Likewise, I say unto you, there is joy in presence of the angels of God over one sinner that repents. And so we see some of the same type of information, except this one is, uh, is not a sheep. This one is a coin. And of course, a coin can't wander off, but, it, but we do have valuable things that just get lost. And one of the primary issues, of course, of this uh, parable is God used the word coin. He used the subject matter as being a coin, which, of course, for all of us has the object of value. God values his creation and values his people, those that he has created. He values you and me. But let's talk about a, another connection that we can see or uh, in the three parables of the lost sheep, the lost coin, and the lost son, the prodigal son. We see, some say that we see the Trinity in these three parables. The good shepherd, of course, being the son. Jesus himself called himself the good shepherd. He says, I am the good shepherd and give my life for the sheep. And then we see in this parable with the coin, we see a searching of the house. This would be a, a picture or shadow, you might say, of the Holy Spirit that does the work of God and searches out for lost individuals. The Holy Spirit is the one that shines the light within our hearts and exposes the sin and, and that that is in us that has caused us to be separated from a holy God. Sin that is within us. And so the Holy Spirit, we have the Son as the Good Shepherd, searching the house. The light that searches the house is the Holy Spirit. And then in the prodigal son, we have the father with his arms outstretched, waiting on his son to come home. And so we see the father, the son, and the Holy Spirit. We see the Trinity in these three parables. Not that that was the primary purpose of these parables. It was not. Uh, but, uh, but a beautiful, beautiful identification, you might say, of the Trinity within these parables. So the lost coin has the same elements in it. We see where he, he talks about at the end, he talks about uh, repentance, which is so important. The person repent and turn to God and ask forgiveness for their sins. We see that there's rejoicing in the presence of angels. So many people say, well, the angels rejoice, and the scriptures do not say that. The scripture says that in the presence of angels there is rejoicing. We see here the identifying of us, as being coins. You see, a coin has value. I mean, we know that. 
in this world, there's nothing that is considered really more valuable than money. It's what we use for exchange. It's what we use to determine the value of other items. If you're going to buy something, you use a certain amount of money, coins, dollars, or whatever, uh, depending on what country you're in. But, you, but the, the, the coin identifies us with value. There is a value for our souls, and I guess the the major thing that is different from the sheep is uh, one of the most major things I see is that he's trying to express how much he loves us. Yes, he expresses it by leaving the 99 and going and finding that sheep that got lost, but, but with the coin we have a definite identity, you might say, or identification with value. Your soul is valuable to God. You know, it bothers me or concerns me at times, even about my own self, that we can get so complacent that we don't really seem to be concerned for our own souls. We say, well, I got saved, you know, 20 years ago or whatever, and so we're not concerned because we know we're saved, and there's some truth to that. But you know, Jesus says, if you gain the whole world and lose your soul, what have you gained? I mean, it's about our soul, this whole thing issue of, of Jesus coming and taking our sin on the cross and us identifying with him and recognizing our need to be saved and calling out to God for forgiveness and calling out to God for mercy. It all has to do with our soul. And so I guess I would express to you today value. God values our soul so much that he literally sent his son and his son valued our soul so much that he was willing to give his life for our souls. Do we value our souls the same way? Do we recognize? Do we really recognize? I think we just forget sometimes. Our souls are so valuable that we need to recognize that and keep it in mind and keep it, you might say, in the forefront that it can help help us with our priorities. We need to recognize that this is not some game we're playing. When this life is over, there's eternity forever and ever and ever. And we need to recognize the value of our souls that we want to... Uh, realize its value, its worth, even as God recognizes it. And I, I think it's something that is revealed to us. The lack of recognizing that is in the lack of commitment of so many Christians in their walk with God. We can't take for granted the mercy of God. We should never, never take for granted uh, what Jesus Christ did for us on the cross. It's a serious thing. And, and God loves us so much. So we see some of the same things expressed in this, but we see it through a different perspective. God is trying to get a point across to us that we are of so much value to him. He loves us so much that even as this lady would search a house diligently, and we all have searched for something valuable, hadn't we? So we do understand this parable. Well, this is Pastor Talk for you. May God bless you as you recognize the value of your soul.